my name is Mark Bennett, um, and I'm actually very new to Google and Play. I only joined the business in January this year, and well, what a year it's been. Play is a very exciting business. Um, very humble to see some of those stories there. And we have a very busy, packed agenda today, some, um, some incredibly cool stuff that you're going to hear more about today. And my role is, is, is pretty easy, really, to talk about um, where Play and Android are within the EMEA region. So let's get started, and we'll start by talking about our platform, about Android, which has grown exponentially over the, the last seven years since it was launched. And we announced an amazing milestone um, last year that we'd passed one billion active devices, which is a, just an incredible number. But what is also a powerful number is that 1.5 million activations we are seeing every single day. And that's a reflection of the success of, obviously, Android on smartphones and tablets. But also, as Android has um, continued to expand onto other platforms, such as Android TV, uh, wearables, and even into cars. And as that ecosystem has expanded, so has the number of um, OEMs we work with, now up to over 200 OEMs who are developing for Android, which again is a huge number. And then to just to kick off the, uh, finish off the ecosystem piece, the operator partnerships, we're working with carriers um, across the world, over 330 carriers selling Android devices and also enabling Play customers to purchase. And then in terms of share, it's, a, it's, a, it's an equally powerful story. We looked at the uh, um, Android share within the EMEA region on smartphones, and the great news here is that that share has increased since last year. This is um, working with a, a research company called Canalis, and that share has gone up from 72% to 77%. So the momentum is, is really with us. And the story's good on tablets as well. Three out of five tablets in EMEA now run on Android, so tremendous momentum. And the future's bright. The forecasts are that smartphones will double over the next five years to over 1.25 um, devices in EMEA by 2019. And as you can see, the lion's share of that growth is going to come from Android. That's the big green bit in the bar chart there, in case you missed it. So very exciting few years ahead as Android continues to expand into new markets. And, and one area that is particularly exciting are these emerging markets. Uh, last year, we talked about Android One. Um, our product director, Michael Slisky, introduced this initiative that Google was leading to try and drive Android share into emerging markets, even with all the growth I just talked about. Um, only one out of four people on this planet have a smartphone, and Google's ambition is to help that next five billion also come online. Android One is an initiative we work with OEMs, chipset manufacturers, to bring quality hardware at a very low cost into these emerging markets. And the exciting thing, or the, the most interesting thing, I guess, for you guys in terms of um, Android One, is that the devices have the latest version of Android on it, which we all know is incredibly important. We announced last year that we were bringing Android One to market, and I'm delighted to say that since then we have launched Android One in India, Pakistan, Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, Nigeria, and Turkey. And within EMEA, there's um, significant um, continued expansion as we bring Android One into Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, Spain, Morocco, um, um, and in Egypt which I might have just mentioned twice. But the, but the growth is, 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 is fantastic, and we're really excited to see how Android One can bring a really quality experience at low cost to even more users in emerging markets. So this scale, this huge scale, um, I think it's safe to say we're the biggest app platform in the world. Over one million apps now live on the store, and they've been downloaded a phenomenal 50 billion times. And Android users are able to download your apps in nearly 200 markets, and importantly, to pay for those apps in 134 markets. And payments, we know, is key. Over the last 12, mo 12 months, we've added 61 new forms of payments in 32 markets, which has enabled over 400 million Android users to now purchase on Play with a new form of payment. And we've expanded in a number of um, key areas to, to enable people to to pay on play 
with different forms of payment. DCB is now in 37 markets, up from 25 markets in 2014. Just a couple of weeks ago, we signed a really big deal with um, a, a telco called MTS in Russia that now gives us virtually 100% coverage for operator billing in the Russian market. Gift cards are now live in 28 markets, up from, 14, up from 18 in 2014. And finally, PayPal, which only, we only um, switched on early last year and is now live in 21 markets. And in markets like Germany, that's been a, a phenomenal driver to help our growth. And it was, it was really pleasing to see in February this year, App Annie talk about Google Play being bigger in Germany than Apple's App Store. So enabling payments helps to enable the ecosystem. And the good news is it's, it's paying off for our developers, for you guys. Uh, we announced that in 2014, we paid out $7 billion to our developer partners, up from $5 billion in 2013, and up from $2 billion in 2012. And, and the momentum is still with us with significant growth as well. So a very, very bright picture indeed. So you're going to hear a lot today about how we're continuing to listen to you and to, to build a better platform for you to distribute your apps, find your users, and monetize. And I'm just going to touch on two of the th uh, three of the key themes um, today. Um, enhanced discovery opportunities, how we can help you find those users within the app, more tools to help you publish with confidence, and making it easier to help find and retain users. So let's, let's start with enhanced discovery. Um, Play is about connecting you with the Android users that share the same interests and passions and needs as the products you're building and taking to market. And a key part of what we do is to try and make our, app, our store experience personalized and relevant. So you just keep coming in, so they're delighted that they're finding the, the right apps and games that really, really excite them. And the first area is to make that store very personalized, is we've started to, to, to really work Google's expertise in machine learning to make that a more personalized experience, to make those recommendations come up as, as soon as uh, an, a, a Play user comes into the store. And we're building more types of collections and increasing more types of personalization, personalization services because we know that doubles the number of app installs by giving people relevant recommendations. We've also added guided search, and this enables a Play, Play visitor to just search for a broad generic term, in this case, photography. And what we then do is provide them with relevant clusters, bringing together the types of apps that you would expect to see under a search term like photography, in this case, photo editing apps and, 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 and collage apps. And we know that will introduce users to a broader range of apps and therefore increasing downloads in, in a particular search term like that. And then finally, an area that we're quite interested in seeing how it develops is topic-based discovery. Um, our sense is that users relate much better to topics rather than, like, here's some more apps that I think um, recommended to you. Um, bringing together clusters under, um, under titles such as popular for the weekend and, and, and games that are going to make you laugh. And we think that will have a lot more engagement with our users on the store as well. Families is a big theme for Google. You would have seen a lot going on within Google around making our products and services more relevant to families. And, 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 and family safety. And that's, and that's absolutely the case with Play as well. Before I.O., we, we started working with many of you guys around IARC ratings and, and, and submission to have your, your apps categorized within the, fam within the family experience. Um, at I.O., we announced that, and you've now seen this navigation appearing within the store, allowing parents to, to search by um, different age categories, um, uh, by um, um, badges, um, even by um, popular characters to find the content that's right for them and right for their families. This is, a, this is a, a really big step for us, and we're seeing some really huge numbers in terms of increased uplift in apps that, that are within the family browsing experience. So if you have a family app, um, please make sure it is categorized and, and, within, and within this experience. And besides making it easier um, for, you, for, for our users to find great apps and games, um, we've continued to listen to you and build better tools to um, enable you to publish, um, acquire users, and more imp importantly, learn how you can improve your products to retain those users. Um, 
the list of tools and features you can see has got longer and longer year um, after year. And, and you're going to hear a lot, a lot more about really cool features and functionalities that we're bringing to market to enable you to build better. And, and one, of the, one of the consistent things I've heard in the, in the few months I've been in the business as I've spoken to developers is the power of play to iterate, to put products into market quickly, to select, you, to select groups of users, and to find out what's working and what's not, what's not, what's not working before you start to spend money driving acquisition to learn the lessons around retention before they come through. And there's just three examples, before I get kicked off the stage, um, that I wanted to highlight. Wooga, I had the pleasure of going to see the Wooga guys earlier on in the year um, in their very cool offices in Berlin. And I know a couple of the guys are here today. Um, uh, really pleasing to hear how they're using um, beta testing, stage rollouts, again, to learn more about how users are enjoying their app and where people are falling out of their app as well. And it's great to hear that they're iterating first on Android. Um, an app that you would have seen in the, um, in the, in the video at the beginning of today, um, a really inspiring story about Olivia um, with Roger Voice to, to really um, revolutionize telecommunications to allow people um, who are hard of hearing to have conversations. He, he, he's used exactly the same as Wooga to iterate first on the platform, and actually he released first on Android. And then a, finally, a great case study from one of our developers in Russia, my.com, um, with their great battle game, Might and Glory. Um, super, super to see them launch first on, on Android. So that's it from me. Um, I hope you've got another sense of the scale uh, um, and the success and the excitement of play on Android. Um, the purpose of these today is to, 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 to obviously give you more information, but also to listen to you and to get more feedback from how we can make play a better platform. So with that, I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible today, and thank you for listening. <laughs>